everyone, and welcome to SixSisterStuff.com. For today's project, what we wanted to do is show you how to build a paver patio with a fire pit in the middle of it. Uh, first of all, by way of introduction, my name's Jared. I was fortunate enough to marry the oldest sister of the six sisters, and kind of by default, I've got to be handy around the house and, and be able to put together these projects. Um, so I thought it would be kind of fun to, to show everyone out there exactly kind of a step-by-step -step process on how that's to be done. Um, a valuable resource in my preparation for this project I found at Lowe's.com. They have excellent how-to tutorials there, um, one of which was how to build this paver patio and fire pit. Um, and so I want to put a hyperlink to that in the video. You can also find a hyperlink to that project at SixSisterStuff.com. What we want to do is also um, kind of build a how-to uh, tutorial that you can just print off with some pictures and kind of an easy outline of it. So look for that on the website also. So the first step in all of this was to be decide a location. And so you can see kind of here in the, uh, in the back of our yard, we've got this large area. Um, it's kind of in the back. We've got some nice fruit trees back here, offered some great shade. But this was kind of an area of our yard that we just never really knew what to do with. You know, the, the, the weeds would grow crazy back here. Our kids would actually refer to this area as the jungle in our yard. And so we thought that this would be a great location to turn it into an actual uh, practical, usable space. And so that's the, uh, that this, is, this is the location that we decided on. The second thing that we decided was what are the dimensions of your patio? Um, for ours, what we've done is it's going to be a big rectangle about 10 feet wide and by about 13 feet long, um, 130 square feet. And then the fire pit in the middle is going to be about a four foot ring. Um, we thought that, that would give us plenty of room to gather in as many friends and family as wanted to come over and, and kind of you know serve the serve the real purpose behind putting this in is, is gathering together. Um, in order to measure it out, all I did was take a tape measure. Um, I had some stakes that I put into each one of the corners, um, measured 13 feet from stake to stake, and then of course you know 10 feet from stake to stake here. But what you want to do in order to ensure that it's an actual true rectangle is you want to measure the diagonals. So I'm going to take my tape measure from one diagonal over to the other diagonal and just make sure that those are even when I do that on each side. And that will ensure that your rectangle is truly a, a, a true rectangle that way. And so you can see this is roughly what I'm, what I'm going to be working with. Um, after that, the next step was to kind of just clear out whatever was here in the way. You can see that I did have a little bit of some grass growing in right here. Just took my shovel and cleared that out. Um, the next step after this is going to be actually digging the hole for your fire pit. Um, the idea here is that we want it to dig about seven inches down into the ground. Again, I'm just going to kind of use my twine that I have here as a guide. I want it to be seven inches down into the ground, and then what I'm going to do is basically backfill that in on top of that. Um, I'm going to put in about four inches of some fine gravel, about another inch or so of sand, and then the bricks that we decided on for this project are about three inches deep. And so after I get all of those materials, well, so the, the, the reason behind that is to ensure that in fact it's, it's, uh, it's, it's sturdy, it's not going to settle. We've got some trees here, I don't want roots to un unearth it and to, to make it uh, bumpy, uneven, and so that's why we're going we're gonna to kind of go through that process of it. Um, and then that will also ensure that it's nice and flush, nice and level with our ground. There's not going to be any edges to trip on when you're getting into and out of it. Um, and so I'm excited. I'm excited for the project. Grab your shovel, go to work. And just like that, through the magic of digital media, all of a sudden my hole is dug. Um, it took me a couple of afternoons just after work. At one point I had a little bit of help. But, uh, you know, she didn't last very long. She thought it was a lot more fun to just play in the dirt rather than throw the dirt in the wheelbarrow for me. But you can see that I've got my hole dug. Um, and again, trying to keep it to, that in, to the uh, depth of seven inches that we talked about. What I did is I found some rebar actually in my backyard. Another reason why we're redoing back here is we find things like this all the time. What I did just to keep it easy and keep the measurement easy is I just put a little dab of paint on this rebar that's about seven inches away from the bottom. And so you can see that that's a really quick and easy way for me to walk around the perimeter and just be able to check the depth as I go. Okay, um, I do want to mention at this point it's really important that we, we grade your patio. 
Now, when I say grade your patio, you don't want it completely flat because you want to allow for, water, for, uh, for runoff, for water. It's not going to stay dry all the time, especially living here. We get quite a bit of snow. So in the wintertime, I don't want that to necessarily settle and make my patio uneven. And so you do want a certain slope to it. Again, very, very subtle. Um, it's going to be hard to see in the video, but our ground naturally kind of had this grade that slides down kind of towards the camera there. And so I just followed that same grade um, as I put this together. Now again, with this, uh, with this piece of rebar, it was really easy to see kind of the seven inches around the perimeter. But as soon as you get away from the perimeter, all of a sudden you don't know. I mean, you can kind of eyeball what's high, what's low. But for the most part, that's kind of hard to tell. And so what I also did on here is I painted the other side of this rebar. Um, and basically, this is the area that we're worried about right here. I'm going to bury this. But this, so this will be on the top of the ground right here. This will be my gravel. So that's four inches of gravel. This will be one inch of sand. And then that's where my brick is going to fill in the rest of that distance to fill up my hole. And so what I want to do is I'm going to show you how to keep it nice and level throughout. Um, come stand right over here. And so you can see I'm going to just pound this in. And again, as I pound this in, I'm going to bury this first six inches. It goes right in. And so when we get down to about that ground level right there, you can see that that's where the top of, that's where the top of my patio is going to be. It's in a right flush with the grass right here. And so there's my seven inches. What I did is I did that same thing at about four different locations around the patio here. I then took my twine, and I've just been running that back and forth between the, pay, or excuse me, between the uh, pieces of rebar here. And as I wrap it around that bottom stake, again, that's right where I want it to be level. That's my seven inch mark. As I did that throughout the patio, you can see that there's areas where it's too high, those that are touching the string. There's, well, mostly, mostly mine's just too high. But there are some areas where there's some ground underneath here where it is a little bit low. Again, for longevity in your patio, it's important that we keep it as level as we possibly can throughout. So I do have just a little bit more digging here to do. Um, and then it's off to Lowe's. We'll go grab some gravel and, and start to fill it back in.